Okay, in this session we will learn about convexity, one of the most important properties of optimization problems that uh, we regard in, in this lecture. And uh, first of all, we look at convexity of sets and then go into convexity of functions. So convexity of sets is actually really simple. So convexity of sets, um, what you require that if you take two points into uh, the set or from the set, and then you draw the line segment between these two points, then you remain entirely within the set. So the example that you see here, this is a non-convex example, uh, because in the middle here we have a point um, that is on the line segment, but actually outside. And um, so it uh, does not uh, hold uh, the, the constraint that we have for convex sets. If we have a set, what we can do is we can construct a convex hull, and um, that means we take uh, the, the combination of all uh, points that lie within uh, or between uh, points that are originally contained. So here we have all these small um, well, black dots and we take the convex hull around that and uh, this is then the smallest convex set that contains all the original points. So besides convexity of sets, uh, we are interested in convexity of functions. And um, the, there are a couple of equivalent definitions what convexity of a function is. And um, the first of them is that the epigraph of the function should be a convex set. So what is the epigraph? The epigraph is here all the points that lie above um, the function and um, this should be a convex set. In that case it is not because we have a point here and a point there and if we draw the tangent light in between uh, it will be outside. So um, in that case this is the epigraph of a non-convex function. Then an equivalent requirement is uh, Jensen's inequality where we require ex exactly that the tension that we draw between two points that are on the function um, are above the function. So here we have uh, two points that are on the function x and y and um, then if we draw the, the, uh, the line segment above that then it has to be above the center point um, that uh, lies here, the center point between x and y, um, and we have a certain alpha that we can, uh, where we can freely choose any point between x and y, and um, the, the line segment always has to be above that. And uh, another condition, uh, we have just prior seen the definition of the Hessian matrix, and another requirement is that the Hessian matrix is positive semi-definite if the function f is twice differentiable and then we have like a bathtub shape that is uh, open on the top and um, uh, that then uh, gives us also uh, convexity. So all these conditions 1 and 3 are equivalent. If one of them is true then the others must be true as well. So subgradients are uh, a notation that will occur a couple of times. So uh, this is why we are introducing it here real quick. Uh, if we have a point x that we have selected and then we draw the tangent line that is actually in the direction of the gradient of the function, then uh, we get the so-called subgradient. And uh, if f is convex, then the function is always above of the subgradient. That's also why it's called the subgradient. And um, there's also the possibility that f is not everywhere differentiable. And then we can also form a subgradient, but not only one, then there can be a whole set of subgradients at a different point that all uphold the condition that they are uh, below the function everywhere. Uh, but um, there can be several of them at, at the same time. 
So if we now see a function, how can we find out if it is convex everywhere? So the conditions we have seen before, this is something that has to be true at every point x or between every point two, uh, between every points x and y on the function. But we want to have some conditions where we can just look at the function and know that this is true and we don't have to check in every possible uh, location if the convexity conditions are true. And um, there is a way to combine convex function uh, where we do not lose the property of convexity. So we can have like Lego blocks, we can have small bricks, like Legos that can be combined and integrated and we know that the result will still be a convex function and this uh, is uh, a very helpful tool later. And uh, there are a couple of the smallest Lego blocks, so to speak, uh, that are known to be convex or that are known to be concave. And uh, if they are concave, then we can take the negative of that function and it will be convex. And here there's a list of them. So for example, um, A transpose X plus B. So A is a fixed vector. We transpose it, multiply it with X plus B. Um, this is what we call an affine function, so linear plus an offset. Uh, this is known to be convex. Then x log x is known to be convex. Then x transpose px for p positive semi-definite is convex. So here p is a matrix and uh, this notation here it says that p shall be positive semi-definite. And um, whenever we have a norm so um, the Euclidean norm or the Max norm and so on. Uh, for every norm, the norm of X will be a convex function. And uh, yeah, so the Max norm, so the, the, the infinite norm, the Max norm um, is, is by, by, by definition from the above also convex. And then a couple of known concave functions. So uh, X to the power of P for P between zero and one. Uh, the logarithm of x, the, um, um, the square root of x, um, then um, x transpose px for p a matrix that is positive uh, negative uh, semi-definite and then the minimum of x is also a known concave function. There are a couple more but these are the most important building blocks. And how can we combine these? We can do a composition where we say we have a bigger function f or a function f that we are integrated in and uh, we are using one of the known quote-unquote Lego blocks as input or as components to this f. Uh, we will see a couple of examples uh, on the next slide. And uh, if f is convex and f is increasing if the argument i is increasing and g of i is convex, then the result will be convex as well. Or if f is convex and f is decreasing in the argument i and g i is concave, then the result will also be convex. And uh, so we have uh, known primitive functions, known Lego blocks, we have a composition rule that preserves convexity, and now we can build bigger and bigger structures and show also for other functions from a problem domain if it is fitting the mold where we can just by looking at it can describe how, how convexity arises. Uh, but attention, the, these composition rules are sufficient to show convexity but there are also problems that do not fit the mold and are still convex. So now it's quiz time uh, with what you have seen on the previous slide. Uh, let's have a look at this function and decide whether this is convex or not. So I give you a couple of seconds to decide and then we will uh, solve the puzzle together. So first of all we can decompose this function into well its structure. We can create a tree structure that shows how these building blocks are integrated into a bigger whole. And uh, let's start at the very bottom. So first of all x minus y. This is looking very much like an affine function or a linear function. 
and uh, this one is convex. Then if we are squaring this, if we take a convex input and square it, will still be convex. All is good. On the other hand, the maximum of two inputs will be convex, if both inputs are convex. Then 1 minus an input, hmm, this will generate a concave result. So the, the, the lower element here, max of x, y, this one is uh, convex. But then by taking the negative of that, the result will be concave. But don't worry, in the end, um, we will use this concave element in a place where the function is diminishing, where it's getting smaller, if um, this part is um, increasing. So overall here we have a convex function. Let's move on. Let's move to the second example. Um, min, max, log and so on. Um, looking quite complicated and uh, again we will create the tree from which um, the decomposition of this function is visible and uh, we go over it one by one to show if it's convex or not. Now again giving you a couple of seconds to, to think of this ahead of time. Convexity or not. And the time is up. We will talk about this. So the first element it's affine, convex, that's pretty clear. The second element, again, we take uh, the square of a convex input, will be convex, everything is fine. Then we take the logarithm, this is known to be concave, so here we have a concave result. Then on the other side, we take the one norm of uh, the vector big X, um, then we multiply that by 2, still not a problem, still convex, but then we go to the third power. And the third power, this one is neither. This one is neither concave nor convex. So I think you all recall the shape somehow. So this third power, this will look something like this. And there are parts of it that are convex and there are parts of it that are, that are concave. But overall, we have neither of them. Okay, so the end result, we cannot recover from here by taking the maximum of a concave and of a neither concave nor convex input um, well, we cannot say if it's convex or concave. Well, we can say that it's neither of them. 